In this video, I want to show you how to fit an infinity shower tray with a single fall to wall. Now, a lot of people want this look, but they can't achieve it either because the joists are running the wrong way or because they're on a concrete floor and they can't run the waste pipe away. So the only alternative is to raise the shower tray up. Now, if you do that with an acrylic tray on legs and a panel along the front, it's not a great look and it doesn't feel that solid. Now, this feels like part of the structure. I was immediately impressed on how rigid and secure this fitting is. It looks like part of the building and it's surprisingly easy to achieve. So I'm gonna take you through step by step the solution of how to achieve this without running the waste pipe through the floor. Everything you need to complete this infinity tray is contained in these two boxes, including, in this case, the sub-element. Now with the sub-element temporarily fitted down here, I can work out where I'm gonna run the waste. Now you may actually have a waste pipe already coming through the wall, in which case you've gotta cut this sub-element to fit, but I'm lucky enough to have a bit of a choice. But with this trap, you've got multi-direction, so you can go out through either side of there, or with the elbow, you can even go down, straight down through the floor. In this case, we've got a concrete floor, and we've got the sub-element here, so we want to go out through the wall. So I'm just going to work this out now where I need to go by placing it in there. And I'm going to put the elbow on, and then I'm going to cut out a section of this sub-element to accommodate my two-inch waste pipe. Now, I just want to show you something about this trap. I've already said it was multi-directional, but it's more than that. It's actually, you can reduce it down. It's provided with a reducer and a stop end so you can take it down from 50 mil to 40 mil and at 50 mil two inch you've got 42 liters per minute so that's quite a flow rate if we reduce that down to 40 mil the inch and a half then that reduces it down so work out what shower you're using and how much capacity you want now in my case I'm going to reduce this down and I'm going to add this elbow and we just need to mark out where that pipe's gonna go. You can have this extender on, or you can take it off and bring it in tighter. So I need to get this out through the wall on the side so I can mark up where I want to cut out on this tray. Now, don't be too tight with this. Leave yourself a little bit of leeway because you want about eight millimeters off that back wall there. So if I leave that kind of cut out, that'll give me ample opportunity to adjust it. Now all the fittings on this trap are solvent weld, so you've got no problems with it leaking later on, no rubber seals or anything like that. But it's important when you do solvent welding, you make a good job of it, which means putting a bit of cleaner on first of all, because basically a lot of people don't really understand what that is. I know loads of plumbers who don't do it, but when they're manufacturing this, they produce a kind of releasing agent that sits on the plastic pipe. So by applying the cleaner you're cleaning that releasing agent off and getting it ready for the solvent weld cement basically the solvent weld isn't a glue what it's doing is melting those two surfaces together slightly so nice little bit around there and that's the 
cap for the unused port, the one we don't want, and on the one we do want, we're going to put the elbow on, and then I'm going to reduce down with this level invert reducer, which obviously has to go at the bottom of the pipe. Now I say obviously because some people don't do it. I have seen people who have actually put that in the wrong way up and produced a jump. So on the top here it says up and you might wonder what that is. Well in actual fact this little extender if you like has got a three degree fall on it so that you get that little bit of fall. So if you need it then use it but make sure that you put it so that it's going downhill and not uphill. In the kit, we've got two bags of fixed KST adhesive. Now, one of those is gonna go under the sub-element and the other one we're gonna use on top before we lay the former into place. We've also got a bottle of primer here, which you would need if you were laying this onto a timber floor before you use the adhesive. But because this is going onto a concrete floor, we don't need to use the primer. And they've also supplied us with a notch trowel and even a pair of gloves. This sub-element and also the former come in 1800 millimeter wide pieces. You can actually cut it down to anything like 1200. I've had to cut this down. I've taken 50 millimeters off each end. Always take it off both ends to keep the thing even, keep it equal. And you can also extend this if you need to. You can go longer than the 1800 millimeters. So you can go from anything from 1200 millimeters to whatever you want really. It's a really versatile system. The other thing is always make sure that you level the sub element first on the floor. We've put that down on the adhesive. They give you plenty of adhesive. So if you've got a slightly uneven floor, you can level that sub element first. When you've done that, the fall is built into the former, into the tray. So you'll be fine there, but also check the waste is watertight before you lay this down on the adhesive. Now, it's solvent weld. I've never personally had a problem with solvent weld. I've never had a leak with it, but that's because I do the job thoroughly. I make sure all those joints are clean. And if you do that, you really shouldn't have any trouble. And one more very important thing that I forgot to say is that there's a rubber ring which comes in the kit that must go round. There's an O-ring there, if you like, that goes around that trap. So make sure that's in the groove. It's a really good fit, actually. I mean, it makes a really good seal on there but just make sure you don't forget to put it in. I've run a bead of MD sealant adhesive along the back of this plastic strip. And what I'm now gonna do is drill it and put a few screws in to line up with the studs because that is the support for the back of the linear drain. So I'm gonna take this tile guide out of here temporarily while I pull the waste up into place. Now don't throw this away. They do everything they can to make sure that you're aware that this is an important part of tile guide, but people still chuck it away. They still come unstuck. So what can you do? Anyway, I need to pull this trap up into place now. And that's nicely in place. And the screws are in the pack in a polythene bag so these are stainless steel machine screws countersunk that go into the trap and hold it really securely in place. The 
The next job is to seal all the way around the edge of his tray and to do that in the kit I've got two pre-filmed corners which go in first and then this tape overlaps it. There's enough of this self-adhesive tape to go all the way around the edge and even a little roller to smooth it all down, make sure that it's well stuck both to the tray and to the wall. I'll tell you something about this tape. I managed to put it on, but what I would say is that do it in bite-sized chunks. This is incredibly sticky, this tape. And if you actually touch the two bits together, you'll find that it just won't want to come apart. So you want to avoid that. You want to avoid that folding over there because that makes it very difficult. But it certainly is waterproof and it certainly does stick. So, so long as you do it in small pieces and you get a good overlap on it, there's no problem at all. Now, before I go any further, I just want to mention one very important detail about this whole tray and the system, the way it works. It's designed so that you've got a single fall going down to the linear drain and you don't have any horizontal tiling behind the drain. So in other words, all the fall of the water is one way. So instead of tiling the tray first and then the wall, what we do here is tile the wall first, slightly counterintuitive, but we wanna get that tile down behind the drain there and then we can carry on with the floor tile into this tile trim, that's important. It actually says here, important note to the tiler, put the tile trim in. It's amazing how many people don't do that. You know, they don't read the instruction, even though it's there in clear letters for them. But if you put that tile trim in there and you bring the tiles up to it, the job will be beautiful, it'll be perfect. So that's it. I'm just doing a bit of a dry fit here before we hand over to the tiler. We've got a nice waterproof substrate. Everything is sealed. We're not gonna get any leaks at all around here. And I've just cut this tile trim ready for the tiler. It says here, note for the tiler, that's important that you have that trim around the edge. And you can see that I've got a tile going down at the back of the drain. That's because on this drain, this single fall, we don't have any horizontal tile surface behind the drain. So you bring the wall tiles down first, and then you can put the floor tiles into place. And these are nice slip resistant tiles. You can use any tile you like, of course, but it's always safer to use a slip resistant tile in a shower area. But if you take care of those few details, hand it over to the tiler and you'll have no trouble. So this is it. This is the completed job. The tiler has been and gone and made a fantastic job of this using the three tiles. And all we've got to do now is to drop the cover into this waste. We can now take out this bit of tiling guide. We don't need that anymore. And you can see here that the tiler has taken an off cut off the edge of the tile and set it into this drain cover here now. So by placing the raised adjustable pieces onto the screw heads, we can, a bit by trial and error really, we can adjust that so we get it absolutely level with the edge but there's no need to worry about the seal the water is going to go down the edge of here and it's all going to find its way into the drain i would just say before we do that we have to pop in the trap and it's important that you remember inside the kit in the in the pack is the rubber seal that goes around the edge there so now don't forget we're going to put the trap piece in and then that goes on top and pushes down to make the seal. And this finally goes into the top. I need to put a few more raising pieces in there, but I just adjust it on these two just to check I've got it in the right place. It's gonna need winding down slightly.
So that's it, that's nicely in place and ready to go. And I think the customer is going to be delighted with that. And from my point of view, this is a solution to an age old problem. And I think that having done this one, I'm going to be doing quite a few more.